Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. Most important is patient-centered care. I talked about navigators. I talked about making sure that all the tests are happening in a manner that makes sense to the patient if they come from far away. All of that is incredibly important that you, you pick a center where this is of priority. In addition to things that we just talked about, there are other things that are incredibly important going through a cancer journey is having access to psychosocial support, having access to financial counselors and caregiver support. It's a conversation that does not happen a lot while you're in clinic with your physician talking about the treatments, but a lot of cancer therapies are incredibly expensive. A lot of tests are incredibly expensive and, and, and going into this, not having an idea of what kind of expenses you're looking at can be very distressing for patients and caregivers. Um, a lot of places have recognized that as an issue uh, and, and, and can provide patients with access to financial counseling if the physician is not somebody who's comfortable having that discussion. But I think these are important questions to ask and these are important questions to think about when picking a place for cancer care. And, and like I sort of alluded to before, having multidisciplinary discussions where you have surgeons and oncologists and radiation doctors all sitting together and talking about care is incredibly important that they are all there and that they are all talking to each other to make sure that the right sequence of care is provided to you or your caregiver for lung cancer. There are several advocacy groups and there are several um, education websites like NCCN and ASCO and, 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 and websites that provide guidelines where you could be directed to. It's always helpful to get names of these organizations from your care team rather than just going on Google and, and often finding information that might cause a lot of distress and might not be accurate. Uh, but these are there are advocacy groups out there that you could be connected to. So if you have a tumor with EGFR mutation, there is a whole advocacy group of, of patients and caregivers who have the same mutation. So it's helpful to be connected to those groups so you can um, talk to them about what to expect and sort of what the journey looks like. And most of all, across the continuum from screening to treatment, safety is incredibly important. It needs to be woven through the entire process. So again, having access to a center that can provide all of these pieces, including supportive care and taking care of your symptoms and sort of a holistic care is incredibly important. And at every step of the way, I hope patients and caregivers understand that, that there is communication that's happening and that every decision is a shared decision-making. So what doctors and care teams are offering are options. Ultimately, patients need to make sure they have all the information that they need so that the decision is ultimately theirs when picking any kind of treatments um, that are offered to them. And most of all, again, sort of as an advocacy goal for us is to make sure that all the high quality science and research that's coming out is available to every patient regardless of where they live. One of the biggest push that all the large organizations that fund clinical research is to make sure that we have clinical trials that include patients with, from all the backgrounds, not just not just the patients that can afford um, to go to certain centers and get care. So we wanna make sure that clinical trials represent patients from minority population, women and people who live in rural areas and to make sure that our patients are not having to travel to centers far, far away for clinical trials, but bringing clinical trials closer to home. And so these are things that we know as as caregivers, um, as patients, we need to ask for, and, and, and something that uh, I know that all the doctors and healthcare systems are also becoming more aware of. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us. 
This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lily and Exalexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate, and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.